I'm here to convince you that what some people feel is the hardest aspect of functions is actually one of the most fun. What on earth am I talking about? I'm talking about when exams such as the GRE and GMAT insert these random symbols, as you see here, like a circle with a line through it, and expect you to know what to do. How can we know what to do when they give us symbols? How can we handle symbols? Let me demonstrate with three examples in ascending order of difficulty. Let's look at the first symbol here in this question. It says, if x symbol equals one over x, what is the value of brackets three symbol and brackets symbol? Very important there to notice that there are two symbols. Let's just break this down. It says x symbol equals one over x. What does that mean? The symbol is an instruction about what to do with the value either on the left or the right or both. And we'll get to those harder examples in a second. Here, there's just one value on the left, x. The symbol is going to whisper to us the instructions of what to do with that value. What did the symbol whisper this time? It said, do one over the left value. The x was on the left and the symbol told us, what should we do with the x? Do one over that left value. So now we're going to do that. We're going to follow those instructions, but this time the value isn't going to be an x. It's going to be a three. And yes, we are going to start with the bracket. So what is three symbol? I'm not going to try and pronounce whatever that symbol is. It's kind of like a theta, but kind of scrunched down. But anyway, what is the value of three symbol? Well, we're going to follow those instructions just as we were told and do one over three. So three symbol, we do one over three. But then notice there's a bracket and then there's another symbol. What that means is get the answer to the first bracket, get the answer here, which is one over three, and then apply the instructions again. Remember the instructions were do one over the value. So here we're gonna do one over one over three. So a third symbol is one over a third. Now quickly to get the answer here, of course we need to know about fractions, but I've got other videos if you want to brush up on fractions. One over a fraction just becomes the flipped version of the fraction. So one over a third is three over one, which is three. So the final answer is three. We're actually back to where we started with, which is quite cute. And just another reason why symbols are fun functions. But I suspect that some of you may still be confused about what's going on with these symbols and left value, right value. So let's do another example. If a symbol b equals a squared minus two b, what is the value of negative three symbol negative one? Well, let's read out what the instructions are. This time, because the symbol is between two values, we have a value to the left, the a, and a value to the right, the b. We have two sets of instructions. Let's read out those instructions. The instructions were for the a, for the left value, to square it, and for the b, the right value, to do negative two times the b. So let's just recap what we've learned here. A symbol B equals A squared minus two B. In other words, the instructions are square the value on the left and then take away two times the value on the right. Now we need to follow those two sets of instructions carefully with these new values that they've asked us about. Negative three symbol negative one. Well, the negative three is our left value. It's like our replacement A. The negative one is our right value, like our replacement B. So let's follow the instructions. The left value squared is negative three squared minus two times negative one, which is the right value. Negative three squared is of course nine. Negative two times negative one is plus two. The two minuses cancel. Nine plus two is 11. So the correct answer is 11 here. I think many of you are starting to get it now. So let's end in one final hurrah with a new symbol. If P, what is that symbol again? Is that omega? But anyway, it doesn't matter. If P symbol Q equals 3P brackets Q minus two, what is the value of, oh my goodness, three symbol brackets two symbol minus two end bracket? And this time we have the answer choices. And if you want, pause the video. In fact, I encourage you, pause the video. Try your best, take your time. These are really 165 to 170 level questions for the GRE, the hardest end questions as well for the GMAT. Take your time, see what you get. Yes, we do need to start with the bracket symbols as I've written down below. So we're gonna start with the two symbol negative two. 
But first, we're going to read out the instructions. The instructions were this. What should we do with our left value and our right value, our P and our Q? We do three times the left value, then brackets, the right value, take away two. So the P was our left value, the Q was our right value. So we do three times the left value, times, in brackets, the right value, take away two. So to follow those instructions, we're now going to use the two values that you can see in the brackets on the right. So two is our left value and negative two is our right value. We're looking to the right of the question. We're going to start with the brackets. In fact, we have to. Placing two in as our left value and three in as our right value, we get three times two, and then in brackets, negative two, take away two, which gets you six times negative four, which is of course negative 24. Now, because that's in brackets on the right, that becomes our new right value. So it's like the question has become three symbol negative 24. We have a left value of three now and a right value that we've just calculated is negative 24. So we're gonna replace the three as our left value this time and negative 24 as our right value. So we get three times three and then negative 24 take away two in brackets, which is nine and negative 26, which gets us to negative 234. And that pretty much covers how to handle symbols on these exams. If it did seem a bit difficult, do watch the video again because there's a lot of subtle details in terms of what we do first and how we think about it. But hopefully with this mindset, you can now easily and confidently handle any symbol question on the test.